I'm an L.A. boy. I was born and raised in Los Angeles, in South Central Los Angeles, on Vernon and Central, and uh, went to L.A. public schools and graduated from Los Angeles High School and went to UCLA and then spent some time in New York, 10 years there, um, did some graduate work at NYU and came back to L.A. So that's my whole life in uh, in a couple of minutes. The origin of the magazine. Oh gosh, <laughs> the origin of the magazine is uh, the uh, magazine actually or, or originated on my kitchen table when I was uh, probably about uh, uh, five years old. Uh, <laughs> I mean, if you really want to trace it back, um, no, printing was a hobby of my dad's, and he had one of these little hand presses that uh, uh, printed business cards. And, uh, and that was literally on the kitchen table. And it was a hobby of his. I grew up knowing about printing. And this is back in the days of metal type when you had to take each letter one by one and assemble them and, uh, uh, and to create whatever you, you needed to create. And, uh, and, f and knowing about printing, um, uh, that's probably the origins. But then in junior high school, I was uh, in journalism and um, was editor of the school paper. Um, and at the same time, I was interested in printing and uh, uh, took printing courses. So I was kind of on this journalism printing thing in high school. And, uh, and then as I got more and more into it, I uh, started a newspaper in New York called Gaze Week which I'm real proud of. That was the first weekly gay and lesbian newspaper um, in New York City. And at the time, it was only one of three lesbian, lesbian and gay papers in the entire world. And, uh, and that was started by a black man. What year was that? That was 1977. I got involved in, um, in actually a sex club. Uh, the, and the way that happened was um, about the time that, uh, that AIDS and HIV was making its, its, its uh, presence known, um, there were, uh, abstinence was the order of the day and wearing com condoms. And it seemed to me that, that that wasn't a message that people were acting on. It was, it was a don't message. It was, you know, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this. Which is something that uh, 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 the way that uh, AIDS is still um, discussed today. Um, but one of the things that I thought, well, okay, let's provide a place for people to have safe sex uh, rather than just talk about what not to have. And so I started uh, this in, I think it was 83, um, a uh, sex club for black men. And, and again, a number of firsts, I understand that, that, that Blackjack was the first, and I have to put all the qualifiers on this, the first public uh, sex club for black men ever. Um, uh, yeah, I created that. And uh, the... Uh, Advocate wrote a story on it and mentioned that. And uh, as we changed over the years, we had representatives of Minority AIDS Project come in and talk to the guys about safe sex uh, in the middle of the uh, in the middle of the evening. Well, anyway, how this is related <laughs> to publishing is we uh, I because I had a publishing background, uh, I was sending out the flyers for the, uh, for, the, for the meetings that were held monthly. We call them meetings. Uh, and, uh, um, and over the years, the flyers for the meetings went from little flyers to eight and a half by 11 flyers to larger flyers to flyers that had a little bit of news in them to flyers that were four pages to flyers that were eight pages. And these flyers were uh, in starting to include uh, community news. There were calendars of events, there were things. And so it was just a hop, skip, and a jump from the Blackjack newsletter, as it was called then, 
from the Blackjack newsletter to BLK. And, and in some sense, uh, BLK is really the Blackjack newsletter. <laughs> but uh, uh, there is, so the, the Blackjack newsletter, I think we continued that until, until the 90s. BLK started in 1988. And, and the feeling really was that, or my feeling really was that, uh, that I was doing this work that, that had important information, important news, but it was for a small group of people that were members of Blackjack, and that this information really could, was of use to the entire community. So I needed to take it out of Blackjack and put it in a separate publication, and that publication became BLK. And at that point, the Blackjack newsletter shrunk down to its one-page thing of being a flyer for the club, and then all the news was in, was in BLK. And we ran BLK from 1988 until 1994. Uh, when we uh, were coming up with the title, First, the first question was, is this going to have a gay title or is it going to have a, a black title? And, and I think from what I've said so far, it was going to have a black title. This is a, back, this is a black magazine uh, about gay people, not a gay magazine about black people. And so it needed to have a, a, a black title. And I uh, analyzed how black magazines did their titles, and they were all riffs on the color black, one way or another. There's Ebony, which is a version of black. At the time, there was Tan Magazine, which was a version of, of black. Uh, there was uh, Sepia uh, at the time, and then there was Jet, which is Jet Black. They all were versions of black. None of them were black. <laughs> so, so we at first thought, well, we'll call it Black Magazine. But that was a little too generic, and it wasn't unique enough. So we decided that we were going to use the abbreviation for black. And so, so that the original idea was that the magazine was called black, but we used the abbreviation rather than spelling it out. Uh, but what happened was, uh, particularly in talking about the magazine and, and um, uh, was that when we would say black, we would always have to explain, well, yeah, it's black, but it's not B-L-A-C-K. B -L -A -C -K. It's black, but it's B-L-K. And so over the years, it, the, the magazine changed from, from being called black to being called B-L-K. And that's how we got the title B-L-K. I hope that, you know, uh, 100 years from now or 200 years from now or 5,000 years from now, we'll look at BLK and they'll say, ooh, a newspaper, <laughs> look at this. And there, there, will be, uh, there will be some record, some sense of people who lived, black gay people, black gay and lesbian people who lived in this time, um, that a record of our activities, what we did, um, that will be there in the future for future people to see. And, uh, and that, that's exciting to me.